When a former KGB officer became Russia's president more than two decades ago, the one question everyone in the world seems to be asking was, who is Mr. Putin? Today, the question has changed to, what is Mr. Putin planning? The tens of thousands of Russian troops deployed near Ukraine's border, the increasing anti-Western rhetoric in Moscow, a Russian diplomatic initiative that looks more like an ultimatum to the West than a serious negotiation. Are these preparations for a large-scale Russian military operations? An invasion of Ukraine? Is it a prelude to war? Like most foreign journalists in Moscow who have telephone number of the Kremlin press office, what they do not have is the direct line into the mind of Vladimir Putin. Only he, perhaps, knows what the plan is. Right now, at home and abroad, he is keeping everything, everyone guessing. But some things are clear. This week marked 30 years since the dissolution of the Soviet Union. President Putin once described that as the greatest geopolitical tra tragedy of the 20th century. He remained deeply resentful of how the Cold War ended with Moscow losing territory, influence, and empire. What was the breakup of the USSR? It was the breakup of historical Russia, Mr. Putin said in a recent state TV documentary. We lost 40% of our territory. Much of what had been accumulated over 1,000 years was lost. The Kremlin resents too. NATO's put Cold War enlargement to the east. Moscow accused the West of breaking verbal promises that the alliance would not expand into Eastern Europe and the former Soviet space. NATO insists no such promises we are given. Can Russia undo what is done? It appears to be trying. Last week, Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryakov unveiled draft security agreement that Moscow wants America to sign. They will provide a legally binding guarantee that NATO will give up military activity in Eastern Europe and Ukraine. The proposals will appear to prohibit NATO deployment to countries that joined the alliance after 1997. Russia is also demanding an end to NATO enlargement in former Soviet territory. In an online briefing, People suggest, that Mr. Ryabov, that what Russia is proposing is a complete reassessment, reassessment of the results of the Cold War. I wouldn't call it a re-examination re of the results of the Cold War, he replied. I would say we are reevaluating the expansion the West has carried out in recent years against Russian interests. This has been done in different ways, using various resources with hostile intent. Enough is enough. NATO, which claimed a defensive alliance, denies it had any hostile intent towards Russia. As for enough is enough, Western government says just that about the Kremlin's behavior, Moscow's annexation of Crimea in 2014 and its military intervention in eastern Ukraine triggered Western sanctions and the image of Vladimir Putin's Russia as an aggressor. It is why the Russian troop build-up near Ukraine is causing such concern. What happens if Russia fails to receive the security guarantee it is demanding? We will deploy missiles, but this is your choice. We don't want this, say Dmitry Kiselev, who presents the most popular news show on Russian state TV and plays a key role in spreading the Kremlin's message to the public. Mr. Kiselev is under Western sanctions also head of the giant state media holding, Russia Sergonia. If Ukraine ever join NATO or if NATO deploy, develop military infrastructure there, we will hold a gun to America's head. We have the military capability. Russia has the best weapon in the world, hypersonic ones. They will reach America as fast as the US or British weapon could reach Moscow from Ukraine. It will be the Cuban Missile Crisis all over again, but with a shorter flight, flight time for the missile. Is Russia prepared to use force to defend its red line? People asked 
Mr. Kiselev. 100% because of for Russia, this is a question of life and death. But Russia is dictating to its neighbor. You are saying that Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Moldova, and former Soviet Republic can't have anything to do with NATO. Countries are either lucky or they are unlucky to be next to Russia. That's a historic reality. They can't change that. It is the same as Mexico. It's either lucky or not to be close to the America. Mr. Kiselev said, it would be good to harmonize our interests and not put Russia in a position where missiles will reach us in four minutes. He added, Russia is ready to create comparable analog analogous threats by developing its weapon close to decision-making centers. But we are suggesting a way of avoiding this, of not creating threats, otherwise everyone will turn into radio radioactive trash. So is the Russian tool build up near Ukraine coercive diplomacy? Is it claiming aim to extract concession and security guarantee from Washington without the need of war, without the need for war? If so, it is a high stake approach. There is a real danger of an inadvertent escalation, be it in the Donbass along the Russian-Ukraine border or maybe in the Black Sea, say Andre Kotunu, the Director General of the Russian International Affairs Council a think tank linked to the Russian authority. If you have tensions, if you have this very poisonous political atmosphere, if you have a lot of military activities on the ground, in the air, the sea, there are risks, something goes wrong. This could lead to a conflict no one really wants. And if there, there is a major conflict, the annexation of Crimea proved popular within, with the Russian public. But Russians have a little appetite for a full-scale war with Ukraine or military competition with the West. I don't think that Russians are focused now on foreign policy success stories, real or imaginary, says Mr. Kotunov. The agenda is mostly domestic and the real concerns of Russia are concerned are connected to the social and economic problem. I don't think Putin is in a position to get a couple of additional points if he starts an operation abroad. Oh, uh -huh.